Redditors who went to school with a kid that later became a serial murderer. Were they creepy even back then? Or were you surprised when you heard the news? I went to high school with a kid who was pulled over for drunk driving and underage drinking. The police officer told him to get home and let him off with a warning. He went home and grabbed a 30 06 hunting rifle and walked into the police station. The officer who let him off earlier walked out and was shot by the kid. The officer passed away on the flight to the hospital. The kid was 16 to 17 when he shot the officer and is still in prison 20 years later. The son of the officer who was shot lived a couple blocks away from me. Such a sad ordeal for both families. I went to school with a girl whose dad turned out to be a murderer. Not serial, so I dk if it counts. But he started dating one of his daughter's friends the day she turned 18, married her, caught her cheating, killed them both, then killed himself. There were signs. He was always a possessive creepy pervert. I went to school with someone who murdered his wife. He was a class clown type. Would do anything to get people to laugh, read like him. He'd smoke and drink around our group, but I don't think he did outside of it. He was a follower not a leader. His personality was malleable. I was shocked when they got together in high school. She was a real go-getter, 5 year plan, Disney loving person, sweet and strong. I wasn't surprised they got married since she was the type of girl again with a 5 year plan and also I imagine she didn't like living together without being married. Anyway, after 4 years I like of marriage he stabbed her to death in their home on a Sunday. Turns out he had been seeing hookers and had lied about getting his master's degree, which she and her family paid for. Back in elementary school, there was a kid in my class who had horrible temper management. If he was upset, he would suddenly scream and kick or punch things around him. Violent tendencies. He transferred to a school in the us in middle school, but I found him on Facebook couple years later. He seemed to have become less childish and had lots of friends at his new school. Fast forward to college, my friend showed me an article of a student at a university in California who attempted to murder his roommate. Lo and behold, it was the kid in my class. He apparently stabbed his roommate in his sleep, survived eventually, and then slit his own throat, also survived. His police mugshot shows a huge gash wrapping around his neck, all stitched up. Last I read of him, he went to prison. I lived next door to this kid who seemed completely normal. We played together all the time. His family was a bit religious and mine wasn't, but as a kid I didn't notice anything odd. We grew apart in high school. A few years after high school he met an older woman, late 30s when he was early 20s, and moved in with her and her two daughters, who were like 8 and 10. She came home from work and found that he'd stabbed them both to death and hung himself in the woods behind her home. Still fucks with me. I went to school with a boy who turned out to be planning a terrorist attack on the school. He was caught before he carried anything out and was one of the youngest to be charged with terrorism. He was shy and quiet but very smart, got a full scholarship to Hopkins. He threw it all away, not only for him, but for his brother, that had been dreaming of working for the government. No way he will get a clearance now, with a convicted terrorist as a brother. <laughs> had a classmate who I knew through similar circles brutally murder a gentle hearted soul from a neighboring town. Happened at our town's annual festival. Victim was playing in a band, and went to sleep in his car after plenty of pints. Scumbag comes to rob his car not seeing the sleeping guy in the backseat. He wakes up a little bit after driving out of town. He proceeds to beat him from the front seat then pull a rock from the side of the road and beat him with it. Once unconscious he dragged him out and proceeded to run him over multiple times in order to make it look like a hit and run. I should make it clear that this pose was notoriously on a lot of drugs and had many convictions prior. He left him on the road and drove the stolen car to friend's house. His said friend called the police after he went to sleep and the police arrived. They arrived saw the car and pose asleep on couch covered in blood. He made a run for it while in custody twice. Poor policing. First as he left friend's house he darted from the marper field. Second while in police station asked for a smoke slash fresh air after confession. Darted again and got about 400 meters down cross streets in a small town. He got life, but I wouldn't be surprised that he'll get out in 15 to 17 if he keeps his nose clean. But here's to wishing it's broken daily. 
I went to school with Susan Smith, who drowned her three kids in South Carolina. She was always normal, didn't seem like the type to do something like that. I went to school and hung around a girl that murdered her baby. To sum it up she had a baby in high school. That kid was taken away around 8 months due to Brian damage from abuse. She got pregnant after that, like she was a tiny girl, and was clearly pregnant, and kept denying it. Her and her boyfriend had no intentions on raising this baby, and planned to murder it. Baby was born they stabbed it in the heart, and burned the body. Her social workers noticed her huge bump was gone and called the cops. Cops found what was left. Found a lot of search history on her laptop that made it clear she'd been planning the murder for months. It was shocking that it happened, but not super shocking. I mean she did abuse her first child, her and her boyfriend were drug users, and when we hung around in school she'd show pictures of her baby yet always seemed so disconnected, when you'd ask her anything about the baby. Honestly it's been like 10 years and no one knows why they killed this baby. She could have had an abortion for free, but chose this instead. She ended up blaming her boyfriend for everything. He got maximum she got 30 months, and had since gotten out, and had another son. There was this kid, that would get bullied regularly in high school he was silent a bit weird well and really talk much, even if you did try to converse with him. Then one day he snapped stabbing his parents before school, killing his father, and stabbing his mother numerous times, survived, she managed to call the police. They picked him up on the bus on his way to school, and found on him a knife and list of all the people he was planning kill in school. Sydney Australia Oak Hill High School. I was best friends with a girl, who is in prison for killing her baby. She was a foster kid and that's how I knew her. My step aunt was her foster mother. She would tell me about how her mom abused her physically and sexually growing up. Her mom also let men rape her for drug money. It bothered her, but she seemed to be well adjusted, and she always talked about wanting to have children. The doctor said her uterus was damages from being raped as a child, but she got pregnant. I lost contact with her when she got married and was pregnant, but I knew about it because my sister told me. I was really happy for her and just knew she'd be a good mom. Boy was I wrong. She had a daughter and apparently became very jealous of her. She hated it when people would focus their attention on her daughter and not her. Her husband decided that he was going to divorce her and they separated. They had joined custody so on a weekend that he was supposed to have the baby, she brought her to him. The baby was lethargic, her eyes were shaking, he couldn't get the baby to respond to anything. Then she started having seizures. He rushed the baby to the hospital where she died. They did a scan on her brain and it was pretty much soup. The mom was angry about the separation and shook her. This girl was in child development class with me when our teacher was showing us what a baby's brain looks like after shaking baby syndrome. I had to leave the class because it was so horrific. She was sitting next to me when we saw it. I just couldn't believe. I couldn't sleep for weeks knowing that this person I once loved and considered an unofficial sister could do something like that. My step aunt who fostered her and gave her a chance was hysterical. It was just all around awful. There was a guy in my class who tried robbing a fast food chain restaurant. He used to work there and the girl he stabbed was a manager that he had clashes with in the past. Stabbed her as he was trying to force his way in, got the money and before walking out, turned around and stabbed her up to a total of 8 times. I remember him being a bit of a punk but not murdering kind of punk. Not sure if it counts, because I didn't know the kid too well in high school. Recently got a bunch of messages saying, do you remember buddy? He just killed a girl and her kids. Only memory of him I had was that he was very hot headed. Turns out he went into a blind rage, murdered his girlfriend and her two kids. One kid made it because she was at a driving lesson and not in the house. I went to school with a guy who was rumored to be gang affiliated. For the sake of the story we'll call him Jay. I didn't believe them at first, because the guy was a total clown. However, around the time 8th grade started, Jay started writing really creepy poetry in our literature class. Lots of cryptic references to gun violence, death, etc. His personality also started changing. Jay was really hostile towards other students, disobedient in class, and started getting into fights outside of school. 
It was very disturbing but amazingly enough, none of my teachers ever talked to him about the content of his work, his behavior, or brought it up to his parents. I wish they had, because maybe they cold gotten him help, before it was too late. Eventually we graduated, and I didn't see him anymore. Ten years later, I see his face plastered all over the local news. As it turns out, he was in fact a gang member, and was wanted for shooting a man to death outside of local park in downtown. Jay turned himself in 12 hours after the shooting. The truly sad part is, that Jay didn't even killed his intended target, he got him mixed up with an innocent man, who was cutting through the park to get home. It was unbelievably tragic. The guy Jay killed, was a recent college graduate with a wife and two kids. This man had his whole life ahead of him, and it got taken away from him, because of some stupid gang bullshit that had nothing to do with him. If that wasn't bad enough, there was actually a string of similar murders, about 17, that occurred in the months prior to the shooting. All of the previous murders played out similarly, late at night, in secluded areas, and all victims were killed via drive-by shooting. Jay and his crew are currently the prime suspects in all of these murders. Last I heard they were all in custody and awaiting trial. I hope they all get put away for life. Not necessarily murder, but definitely complete indifference. I went to high school with one of the fraternity brothers from Penn State who let a pledge die of alcohol poisoning on the couch in their frat house. They wouldn't take him to the hospital and let him lay dying while they partied on. They all got off with a slap on the wrist. He was always super chill, nice, and good looking. I was really surprised to hear that he had a role in what happened to that kid considering we went to a military school. I went to school with a guy who murdered his girlfriend and his parents. He was always an asshole, even as a kid. He was a bully and just verbally mean to most everyone. That also made him kind of a cool kid, so he did have friends, so he wasn't an outcast. That being said, I never would have thought he'd become a killer. As far as I know, he doesn't even have a bad home life, history of abuse story that helps explain why he is the way he is, I think he is just a fundamentally broken person. I just thought he was a jerk. I had no idea how deep it went. Last I checked, he was in prison for life, so I guess that's that. Turns out one of my friends, chilled consistently from middle school into young adulthood, ended up killing at least one person after taking them home from a bar. He was at my wedding, but we fell out of touch a few years before this stuff happened. It was a goddamn shock, BC I had no sense of him being a bad dude at all. OHH. Good times. Went to school with a kid who was always an asshole to me. Giant asshole. Like as in my worst enemy ever in my life. That I hated with a passion asshole. The kid bullied me for years. One time he even randomly punched me in the face during a game of basketball in middle school. Stole things from people. Lied about everything. ECT. My freshman year of high school rolls around and in pet, this kid jokingly pulls a knife on me and talks about cutting my balls off. I figured, hey, I'm gonna go tell on him because he'll probably get written up and get a few detentions. Welp, no, he gets kicked out of the school. For two years, anytime anyone runs into him, they make sure to let me know that he said that if he ever sees me again, he's going to actually kill me. Welp, after many lost sleep nights in those two years, the death threats stop making their way to me, and he kinda just disappears. My senior year of high school, I run into this kid. This kid has put on some serious mass and I walk past him, like I didn't know him. Two weeks later, he's arrested for murder. So it turns out, here's what happened from his timeline. All was announced later as he was a minor when this all had happened. This kid gets kicked out of school. He decides that it's a good idea to start trying to steal cars to make money, so him and two friends go steal cars and hold people at gunpoint. One was above 18, so he got 10 years in prison. Murder dude was 16 and his friend, who was also 16 testifies against him for being the wielder of the gun. Murder dude gets 2 years in big boy prison while his friend, or now former friend, gets a year of probation. While this kid is in prison, he tells everyone that he is going to murder his former friend. Well, less than a week out of prison, the time frame that I saw him, he murders the kid by stabbing him 26 times. 
pulls the kid's teeth out of his dead body to hide dental records, and puts the dead body in a blanket and sets it on fire in the middle of the woods. Then texts his new buddy to let him know that the murder was finished. Welp, police caught him right away, as he told everyone that he was going to commit a murder, and he had texts messages proving his guilt, so he is now serving a life sentence without the possibility of parole. Not one bit of me is surprised, though part of me feels awful for getting him kicked out of school. I really didn't mean to do that. Now here's the thing, is anyone surprised that he committed this murder? Not at all. If I ever met one person in my life who was capable of murder, it was this kid. This kid was the absolute definition of an asshole. Just the most awful kid. Now that being said, his home life was shit, and for that, I feel bad for him. To be fair though, him going to prison for life was the most mentally relieving thing to ever happen to me.